What's up guys, today we're going to be talking about the best Samsung phones to pick up for 200 bucks. So if you guys are in the market and this is your budget, um, I'm going to keep this as close to 200 as possible. And the first phone that I would highly recommend you look at is actually a Galaxy S21 Ultra. So if you pick this phone up in good condition, you can actually find it for around 230 bucks. The S21 Ultra is a fantastic phone. If you pay a little bit more, I think 30 extra bucks, you can actually get this in excellent condition um, as well. But you do have on here an aluminum frame. It still has a really nice premium design on here. It's IP68 dust and water resistant. And it also does have S Pen support, even though it's not uh, built into the phone. And this phone is a very comfortable phone to hold. So there have been rumors that Samsung is actually going to go back to uh, this design because of how comfortable um, it was at the time. So overall, nothing about this phone looks outdated. You still have the matte finish with the uh, really great camera cutout. I really think it still looks excellent in 2024 here. Uh, you have a beautiful 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED display. It is a curved panel, but it's not a dramatic curve. It does curve slightly. It's dynamic AMOLED 120 hertz HDR 10 plus with a peak brightness of 1500 nits. And it is also full 1440p 515 for the PPI. And like I said, even though it's a bigger phone, it is easier to hold than something like a Galaxy S24 Ultra. It's not as uh, wide, so I think it's easier to hold for people with smaller hands. And then also, this phone, it is running the uh, One UI 6.1 update, and then it will also get the Android 15 update as well too, which will be really exciting. We're going to be covering that, so be sure to subscribe. Uh, this phone is also running the Snapdragon 888 processor, 128 gigs of internal storage and 8 gigs of RAM. And I've done a ton of comparisons, ton of videos on this phone. And this phone overall general performance is fine. I did a like day in a life uh, with this phone. It's a very fast phone. It's very smooth, especially with the One UI 6.1 update. And I think the only thing here that you'll notice is that it does get a warmer than usual if you're doing long periods of gaming. I've never had it crash on me or anything like that. I'm not a you know intense gamer, but uh, overall performance is fine. You can play pretty much Call of Duty, PUBG at really great settings on here, uh, no problem. Uh, so this phone, it does have the circle to search, but it doesn't have any of the AI features. So just do note that that's not gonna be there. Uh, you also have uh, pretty decent speakers on here. They get fairly loud, so no issues with uh, these speakers, good amount of bass going on here. And then we also do have, of course, all of our other uh, features like Samsung desktop support and again the pin support is really great on here the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner is really fast as well the best thing about the s21 ultra is that it has a really great camera setup it's a 108 megapixel standard 10 megapixel telephoto with three times optical zoom and then a 10 megapixel um, periscope telephoto with 10 times optical zoom. You also have a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It can also shoot in 8K24. And then you have a 40 megapixel selfie that shoots in 4K60. So the overall cameras are really good. Like I said, I took this uh, with me to Vegas and the picture just came out so good. The epic thing about this phone at this price point is that the zoom photography is extremely good. You can't find anything else at this price point that's going to take uh, excellent 10 times and 30 times zoom shots you get the 100 times on here and it actually still looks good um, so I was really impressed with that battery life is okay on the s21 ultra it's not anything amazing uh, honestly you can get close to six hours of screen on time uh, as a lighter user I was able to get pretty close but if you're doing gaming and stuff like that I just do know you're gonna have to charge this phone and the charging speeds is not all that great I don't think it's 25 watts um, so it's not really that fast. It's got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It does have wireless and reverse wireless charging. Overall, I mean, it's a fantastic pick. I think it's the my favorite pick on the list. All right, so next is the S22. So this is an awesome phone. I saw it as cheap as 219 on Amazon. I think for an excellent condition, you can find it for 250 as well. Uh, it's got the full premium design, and it also it is IP68 dust and water resistant. Has the classic Samsung cutout that they got rid of, and overall still a very nice looking design in 2024 here. So you have a 6.1 inch dynamic AMOLED display. It is 120 hertz HDR10 plus. It gets up to 1300 nits peak brightness, and it has 1080p 425 for the PPI. It's a very beautiful display. Very nice bezels on here. Completely flat. Overall really nice vibrant colors on here. Uh, the max brightness I got a question about is 1300 nits. So yeah, it's not super high for today's standards, but it still looks pretty good outdoors. It's not like 
crazy crazy bright but you can still see it pretty easily all right so this phone it also got the four year pledge so we're on one ui 6.1.1 right now of course it'll get android 15 and uh also you do have the snapdragon 8 gen 1 on here 128 gigs of internal storage and 8 gigs of ram the biggest thing with the s22 uh in recent you know time is that this phone got the Galaxy AI update, so you can take advantage of a lot of the Galaxy AI features. Most of them are here, except I think like one. Um, but it is really awesome. It breathes a lot of life into this phone uh, as far as it being a quote unquote older flagship. Um, but gaming performance on here is pretty solid on the S22. Again, it has the same issue with the Snapdragon AAA processor. It does get a little bit warmer than I would like. And then also the battery life if you game a lot. Uh, it'll really eat into your battery this phone actually has pretty decent stereo speakers on here a uh, decent bass nothing too crazy uh, the fingerprint scanner is excellent and um, overall i don't really have any issues or complaints uh, with this phone too much uh, so you do have on here still i think a really good camera system it's a 50 megapixel standard 10 megapixel telephoto three times optical zoom with a 12 megapixel ultra wide that can shoot an ak24 with a 10 megapixel selfie that can shoot in 4K 60. This phone has excellent dynamic range, great colors. There's a lot of good consistency between the lenses. Uh, I would say the only thing is, I'm starting to notice that this phone doesn't look as good in low light. Um, so that's my only complaint uh, with this phone since it is a little bit of an older phone now, but uh, still, it still takes excellent photos. You guys can see from the shots here. The biggest issue you'll run into with this phone is actually the battery life. It's a 3,700 milliamp hour battery, 25 watt charging. It does have wireless and reverse wireless charging. Uh, it is pretty good overall. Besides the battery life, you're looking at like four hours, 30 minutes of screen on time. Even if you're a light user, if you're a gamer, you've probably cut that down to like three hours and 30 minutes. Um, so yeah, the battery life, this is a phone that you probably have to buy like a battery pack with if you're going to be going somewhere where you know you'll be using your phone kind of intensely a wireless charging pack or something like that um, but besides that it's an excellent phone all right guys next is going to be the galaxy a34 which you can find for around 230 to 250 dollars and this is an excellent phone i really like this device it's got a pretty much an all plastic build here uh, but it does have a more of a premium look so it doesn't look like a you know a super cheap phone it is ip67 dust and water resistant you have a pretty decent size 6.6 .6 inch Super AMOLED display. It is 120 hertz, 1000 nits peak brightness, 1080p, 390 for the PPI. Overall, a pretty decent display. You kind of have the old school kind of water drop notch here. But overall, the colors uh, look pretty good on the A34. Uh, this phone is going to get the four years of Android update. So it did get the One UI 6.1 update recently. And it does have the MediaTek 1080 processor on here, which was actually uh, pretty impressive. It was a very speedy phone uh, animation wise, launching uh, apps and playing games on here. It was able to play PUBG at Smooth Extreme, which was pretty good. Uh, you also do have micro SD card support on here, which is one of the big reasons. So if you want a new phone and you want micro SD card support, this is a very attractive option here. Now the base model is 128 gigs and four gigs of RAM. Uh, you can find the 128 gig and 6 gigs of RAM for like around that 250 price point I've been seeing. Um, but yeah, so overall, the speakers sound pretty good on here as well too. Uh, they get pretty decently loud. The uh, fingerprint scanner on here is optical. It works fine. You can also use face unlock. Uh, this does have the circle to search feature, but you will not have any of the Galaxy AI features, of course. And uh, the cameras on here are pretty decent. They're not bad at all, in my opinion. Uh, they do a pretty good job in good lighting. Only when you take it out of good lighting, it can get a little bit soft and stuff like that. But it's got a 48 megapixel standard, 8 megapixel ultra wide, 5 megapixel macro. It can shoot in 4K 30 on the front and back. And then you also do have a 13 megapixel selfie, which does a pretty decent job as well, too. So overall, the cameras, they're not anything crazy, but they definitely get the job done if you're like a point and shoot person, especially if you're in good lighting. Uh, the most attractive thing about this phone is actually the battery life you get really good screen on time with this phone i noticed really good standby time it also has 25 watt charging which isn't too bad uh, overall the a34 if you're looking for a, a you know a new phone and you don't want to go the old flagship route uh, this is a pretty good option the galaxy s21 fe is also another excellent phone you can find this as cheap as 150 in excellent condition you can find it for around 200 bucks and this is an awesome awesome phone i absolutely love 
uh, the design of the phone. It does have a plastic back, but it does feel uh, really premium still, in my opinion. It looks still like a very premium phone. It's got the aluminum frame on here as well, too. It's IP68, dust and water resistant. And overall, the display looks excellent on here. I think the display looks better than the newer FE models. It's a dynamic AMOLED display, 120 hertz HDR10 plus at 6.4 inches. Really good screen to body ratio on this phone as well. So you get really respectable bezels on here. It's 1080p at 403 for the PPI. Beautiful panel, really great colors on here. I absolutely no complaints uh, with the display. What's cool about the S21 FE, and this is why I kind of preferred over the S21 standard, is that this phone will actually get up to Android 16 because it launched with Android 12. So that is going to be really awesome to get you know, an extra OS update. So you also have the Snapdragon AAA processor on here, 128 gigs of internal storage and six gigs of RAM. Uh, this phone also recently got the circle to search as well too, which is really nice. But again, this phone does not have the Galaxy AI features. And overall performance is gonna be pretty good on here. It does have the AAA processor, so it is gonna heat up a little bit if you're doing a lot of intensive uh, gaming on here. But performance wise, I've never had an issue with this phone. It's always been very smooth, very snappy. Uh, so absolutely zero issues in that department. Uh, the speakers are decent on here, no issues with that. They get pretty loud. Uh, you also do have a optical fingerprint scanner, which works fine. Uh, Samsung desktop support is here as well too. And then you also do have a pretty decent camera setup. It's a 12 megapixel standard, eight megapixel telephoto with three times optical, 12 megapixel ultra wide. It shoots in 4K 60 with a 32 megapixel selfie camera that shoots in 4K 60. Uh, so basically the shots on here look really good still great dynamic range great colors great consistency between the lenses uh the only thing that you'll kind of run into with this phone is that since it's an older flagship you will notice that it gets a little bit soft and loses detail in low light uh you know which is to be expected with you know an older phone uh but if you're in good lighting overall pictures videos they still look pretty good on this phone battery life is pretty good on the fe it's a 4500 milliamp hour battery with 25 watt charging and wireless and reverse wireless charging on here so i'm able to get a uh, pretty close to six hours of screen at one time i've never had this phone uh, give out on me in a day so that is really nice so overall this is an excellent pick and last is going to be the galaxy s20 ultra here this is still a fantastic phone and it's got the aluminum frame, IP68 dust and water resistant, and it overall still feels extremely comfortable in the hand, especially for how big the phone is. Uh, so premium design on here, of course, but the screen is gigantic. It's a 6.9 inch display. It's dynamic AMOLED, 120 hertz, HDR10+. It gets up to 1400 nits peak brightness. It is a 1440p display at 511 for the PPI, but just do note that the 120 hertz doesn't only work in 1080p. So this phone actually got its last major OS update with Android 13, One UI 5.1. It is currently getting security patches, and we actually do have an extremely efficient chipset on here. It's the Snapdragon 865 chipset, and this thing is still blazing, blazing fast. Playing PUBG, Call of Duty, uh, just pretty much doing anything on this phone is still really, really fast. Uh, so the big selling point with this phone is that you have micro SD card support for those who really need the extra storage. You have 128 gigs of internal storage and 12 gigs of RAM on board. So overall performance wise, this phone is still really fast and really no real hiccups with this processor here. Uh, so this phone also has excellent sounding speakers, very loud, very good uh, quality here. And then you also do have an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, which is also very fast. Now this phone does have a Pretty good camera setup for the most part. It's a 108 megapixel standard. It's a 48 megapixel periscope telephoto. You've got the 4X optical with the 10 times hybrid in a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It has a 0.3 depth sensor and it can shoot in 8K24 with a 40 megapixel selfie that shoots in 4K60. You can still get some really good shots out of the S20 Ultra. And like I said, the only thing with this phone is that it does not do as good in low light. It can get a little bit soft, a little bit grainy. Um, but it definitely still has an excellent camera if you're in good lighting, I think. And the zoom photography is still pretty decent on here as well, too. So I was pretty impressed with that. And overall, I think the camera is, is pretty good for this price point. Um, so the most interesting thing about the S20 Ultra is actually the battery life. 
The battery life is excellent on this phone. I actually recently did a battery test this year and this thing is still fantastic. It lasts all day. It's really impressive. It's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery with 45 watt charging and it does have wireless and reverse wireless charging on board. And yeah, I was really impressed. So if you guys want to check that battery test out, I thought it was pretty impressive. So these are the phones that I would recommend. Be sure to let me know what you guys think and I'll catch you guys in the next.